So I have another URL called as a vcloud1 dot dot acutelearn dot net. So it requires two different fully qualified domain names. So through using this particular name vcloud ve dot dot net, which runs called as an HTTP service, which is for the self-service portal, which is required for a self-service portal of it. And this URL is required in the backend proxy connectivity. For accessing the the virtual machine, so that is required to access the virtual machine in the backend connectivity of it. So I'm going to the DNS server first. So first, I am logging into the DNS server. So I am opening the DNS. So I am creating a DNS record. So I am saying call as an vcloud ve dot acute land dot net or my dot one sixty eight dot two dot ten. I am creating a one more record, vcloud ve1 dot acutelearn dot net for 9 dot 168 dot 2 dot 11. Okay. So these are the the two records which you cre create. So which we will see called as an. Or try to ping ping vcloud v dot acutelearn dot net. So I'm saying it is not pinging. Cloud, yeah, correct on the cloud. We get them that time. It is able to get the IP address. Check the root. So we are able to ping to the Linux machines. We cloud. Correct, no problem. From here, there's no reverse gateway. So we created an appropriate DNS record for the Red Hat Linux machine. So let's look at the creating SSL certificates. So log into the Linux machine, create self-signed certificates. So here. Log into DNS server and create host records. So 
So I'm connected to the Linux machine using the SSH. So I have two Ethernet cards, 192.168.2.10. I'm saying card is 192.168.2.11. Okay, I gave the name as VG Club. So I'm just okay. Right. Use a tool called as an. Okay, let me create a folder called as an SSL certificates. So I'm just creating a folder called as an SSL certificate under the slash the root directory. So I'm using a tool called as a key tool, which is a Java based key tool, which is used for creating an SSL certificate. So this is used to basically create this one, iPhone key store. Slash SSL slash certificate dot KF. It is going to store the self signed certificates in this particular file under this particular path. Okay. We are just creating a self-signed certificate. The password for that particular file in order to open that particular file. So I'm just creating a one certificate for HTTP. So which we are saying called as an alias HTTP, just enter it. So it's going to ask you what is your first and last name. This could be your the fully qualified domain name. So I'm giving vcloud.acutelearn.net on which the certificate has to create, which where through which we're going to access called as an SSL certificate, uh, a self-signed portal of it. So you can give anything organization name, IIT. The location, state, and you can view called as an the country code. Now, saying that it is going to create a self self certificate called ecloud.acutelearn.net is this correct? And store that certificate information into a file called as a certificate.ks, which is under this particular part. So, during the installation of the vCloud director, it is going to ask you that where is the path for the certificates? Okay, so, we need to provide that for this. So just say enter, it is going to use the same password. So I'm using one more certificate, console proxy. The alias name which I'm giving it called as a console proxy for the backend connectivity to the virtual machine. So we cloud one dot acute learn dot net. So you can give any name which you need it. Yes, and we can say call it this. Now, using these two commands, so using this command, you can create a self-signed certificate, which is called as an the one for the proxy purpose, one for the the self-signed portal access purpose. So this is the the third step which we did called as an creating an SSL certificate. The fourth step is in create a database. Log into database server, whether it could be a SQL or Oracle. Create a database, assign permission on the database. So I'm logging into SQL Server database application. So I'm logging into SQL Server application. So I'm just creating a new database called as a vCloud. So you can give any name. It is need not to be vCloud. So you can give any name which is required as per your requirement database. So then you can open the SQL Server Management Studio and you can connect to the database server. 
and you can expand to the databases and you can right click and create a database generally we see called as a vcloud created so you should have the ip address of the database server and you have to create a database and you have to assign the permissions so by default if you know the sa user account it is fine if you don't want to use the sa account then you can create a one more user account and you can assign the permissions so i'm just creating an a user account called as a vcloud a sql server account so i'm giving a queue to 2 3 dollar password so i'm saying system admin i'm mapping to the user to the vcloud database i'm saying db owner you can perform all the activities on the database just saying okay so now we create a vcloud user account and we assign the permissions for the database called as a vcloud so that you can write the data into the vcloud database and we can read the data from the database so that's what we did called as assign the permissions on the database so you have to prepare the backend environment so that before configuring the installing that now so we did a step called as creating a database now install vcloud directory application copy the vcloud directory software to the linux machine so change the permissions we have yeah you have so change the permissions of the vcloud of the software to execute set called as an execute permissions then install the vcloud directory application and configure the vcloud directory application the first step is we need to copy the vcloud directory software so you can use called as an ssh win scp tools or any other tools to copy the software from your local machine to the remote linux machine of it so i'm going to the 173 machine so i'm using the vcloud directory folder so i'm using the vnscp tool let me create a folder mkdir/vcloud so i'm going to the So we are saying I'm just copying the vcloud directory bin file. You can download from the VMware website. So just drag it in the folder. I'm going to copy that file into the vcloud machine.
So now I copied the weak load enter software to Linux machine. So when I go to the Linux machine, cd slash weak load. So we are seeing got VMware weak load director bin. So by default, it does not have a permissions to execute. So you just use a command called as change mode and provide the permissions called as an execute so that we can execute that particular command. It's just like a .exe self-extractable file in Windows. In Linux, you could use a terminal because it's .bin. It's a self-extractable file and install file. So just execute this file. So it's going to extract the RPMs which are required for installation of the weak load director and going to install the weak load director application. So here we can see we have a weak load director RPM. And it is installing the VMA weak load director application. You can install it, but you have to tweak it. Okay. So uh, v VMware is giving you only to run it on Red Hat, but still, as you see that any open source mostly compatible with, but you need to download some RPMs and all these things, certain modules. Okay. So would you like to run this script? Okay. So this will initialize the initial configuration. So I'm just saying script now. Then it'll ask you the SSL certificate name, database details, all these details. So here it's saying, indicating that, please enter your choice for the HTTP service IP address. Now there are two IP addresses which we are given. So which IP address you want to use it for accessing the HTTP service, which is a self-service portal of it. So I'm just saying that the first one, just give the number one and say enter. Please enter your choice for the remote console proxy address so to access the, the virtual machine console to the 2.11. As I am already used code as a 2.10, I'm giving it code as a this one. Oh, please enter the path to the Java key store containing your SSL certificates. So just before that, we created SSL certificates. So we have to specify that particular path. So I'm just saying for SSL slash certificate dot ks. So we have stored the certificates into this particular file path, which is called slash SSL slash certificate dot ks. So it asks you for the password. To open that particular file. So, do you want to set up any syslog server? So, I don't want to integrate as of now. I'm just skipping it up. Now, what is asking here now? So, the following database types are supported: Oracle, Microsoft SQL. So, which database server you want to use it? So, I'm using the SQL Server database two. So, enter the host as for the database. So, IP address of the database. 190.168.1.88 the database port number default the instance name so now it is going to ask you the weak load database name so we give the database name as weak load right so i can type weak load the database name the sequence of instances if there are multiple instances you can type the instance name if there is only one single instance you can type default instance enter not here in the database server in a single server, you can install multiple SQL or instances. So each instance can have multiple databases. Yeah, separate so, separate okay. so enter the database username. So we create a user account called as a weak log and use the password, whatever the password which you gave it. So it is not able to connect. Let me. So now it is initialized the database, which is required all the scripts. 
Our weak load adapter configuration is now complete. So once the weak load adapter server has been started, you will be able to access the first time setup wizard at this particular URL. So would you like to start the weak load data service now? Say yes. So let's wait for some time. So let me reboot the server. Just you create a user account. For the sun VCC. Because for authentication, you can set the password. You can use domain user Windows authentication. So this one. Then default database you can set the club. Server rows if you want. By default it doesn't require. User mapping, you map the user to the database and on the database what permissions you want to give. All permissions. You can make DB one up. Okay, just say okay. So this is what we did till here. So copy the weak load data software to the Linux machine. Change the permissions of the software. So I use called chmod 777 and the weak load director bin file. So we install the weak load director and configure the weak load director for initial one. Now let's look at the step called as an initialize the weak load application. So this is my Linux machine. So on top of the Linux machine, we will install an application called as an weak load application. So this is my Linux operating system. So on top of the Linux operating system, we install an application called as an weak load. To access the Linux operating system, we have a root user account and what was the password. And this weak load application will not use the root user account for authenticating to the weak load application. Okay. So it has its own user account <coughs> called as an administrator or you can create during the first try setup order. So don't get confused that. Okay. So this user account which is to access the weak load adder application is a different and to access the Linux operating system is a different user account. So using the root user account, we can only interact with the Linux operating system and we can manage the weak load application from the perspective of installation, starting, stopping the services. But we cannot configure the weak load application using the root user account. Okay. So by default, it has an administrator account. We will see that you can create your own administrator account and you can do that. So on this machine, from where you want to access the weak load data application, so you need to have the code as an Adobe Flash Player. So install the Flash Player. So once you install that, you don't need to do it anything at the Linux side. Everything is through the graphical side. Only to check the logs, we have to go to the Linux machine. So once the service has been started at the Linux side, everything is through the a Windows machine through the browser or a Linux machine through the browser or you can Mac machine, you can use it browser. That is a remote, complete remote administration.
ಹೆಣ್ಣು ಲಗನು ಶ್ರೀನಾಸು ಅಂಜ So I'm just opening the browser. So it works with IE, it works with Mozilla, it works with the Chrome. Okay. So enter the URL or the IP address of the HTTP. For the first time, it takes longer time to open the console. I give it as the cloud on the EE cloud on the now there I've given here in the server I gave it as a VE cloud. So it is going to install the entire week load application in this particular path. So it's slash opt slash vmware slash week load director. Like in Windows PC C colon program files under that we see VMware under that we see week load director as a folder. So in a Linux machine, so here we see condition slash opt slash vmware slash week load director. So this is the folder where it consists of all the binary files of the Weak load data application. We can also see the file called as a log folder. Yes. This initialized now. We can also give IP.
You will connect to one of the Windows machine. I will provide, I'll provide you all this. Subject connecting to the website. Yes. So basically, it is uh, okay. It is knowing the. Uh, it is basically uh, setting the services stop or start automatically. Yes. Okay. CSK config is the command. IP tables is the service name. In Windows, we have a firewall, right? Personal firewall. In Linux, it is called as an IP table. So I put it called as off means I'm disabling auto start. So like in here, we use services dot msc. So when I go to the here, we can see generally we can put manual stop, right? So what happens if you put manual here? When I reboot the server, it does not get started. That's, so that's what I did. It's called as an, I put the Windows firewall into off, the so personal firewall into off. So we can see here the first time screen. So welcome to the vCloud Director Setup Wizard. So this wizard initializes the vCloud Directory database. So with a licensing key, system administrator account and related issue. So first accept the licensing agreement. It's going to ask you the licensing key. So you can get the trial version licensing key and you can apply it. So it works for 60 days of time. Yes, sir, next. So administrator account. The default it is giving you code as an administrator. You can change it if required. So it did not give you an administrator. 
So this user account will have full permissions on the vCloud Redder application. Can I use this user account and log into the Linux machine? No. This is only for a vCloud application purpose. So I'm using Cordizen, whatever the password, which I'm setting to this one. Just press next. The system name, so basically the name of the vCloud director. So I'm just saying Cordizen V Cloud and instance one. So we can have the multiple instances of vCloud director application can be configured into one single environment. So now we are seeing Cortison, we have a weak load director homepage. Just open any browser. Better you add it to the trusted sites so that you don't see issues. What user account I have to use here? Good. Great. So this is your the self-service portal of the vCloud Data. So there are two different kind of users. One is an administrator, one is an end user. Okay. Both people will use the same URL, but we will see as we go on, they'll understand how it is going to be available there. So this is what we did called as an the initializing the weak load director application. So open the browser and type the URL of the weak load director server. There's something like an HTTPS colon slash slash. So IP address of the weak load mission. So now you have set up this particular platform, which is, uh, I would say, Kurtzetil, the vCloud Director application. Now vCloud Director application requires minimum of one vCenter server. Okay. So last week, just recollect the high level blocks which I was telling you. This is your physical infrastructure. So on top of the physical infrastructure, what infrastructure we are going to get? virtualization technology. So then the third level block, which is called as a vCloud block of it. So these are your vCloud or cloud platform of it. So this is my cloud computing platform. And this is my virtualization platform. And this is my, what we call as in the basically the physical infrastructure, which consists of the servers comma storage, comma network resources. So before we go into this step, okay, let me explain something very briefly. This is my vCloud director application and this is my vCenter application and this is my vShield manager. vCloud director server. This is my vCenter. This is my vShield. For each and every vCenter, we need one vShield. One vCloud director can get resources from multiple vCenter servers. One vCloud director machine can get resources from multiple vCenter servers. So I can have 10 vCenter servers, which can be added to the vCloud director application. 
Now in this case, if you have a 10 V center servers, how many V shield servers are required? 10 V shield servers are required. Okay. For every each and every V center, we require one V shield server which will be deployed. Under the V center server, generally what we will have? ESXA servers. So one of the key requirements for the V cloud data application is in two things. One is a DRS cluster. So all the ESXA servers should be part of a DRS cluster. So without the DRS cluster, that ESX server cannot be added into the V Cloud Director application. And all these ESX servers should have connected to the V distributed switch. To get all the networking functionality. So we need to make sure that these two ESX servers are part of the DRS cluster, whatever the ESX servers are part of the DRS cluster. And all these ESX servers are being connected to the V distributed switch to get all the features of the networking and the features of the vSphere environment. HA cluster is an optional component, but which is mandatory here? Yeah. DRS cluster. So we need to ensure that all the ESX servers should be part of the DRS cluster and all the ESX servers for part of the V distributed switch. So then we need to integrate the vShield manager with vCenter server. When we integrate the vShield manager with the vCenter server, the vShield manager will interact with the vCenter server and it understands what are all the ESX servers are available, to which particular vDistributed switch is being connected and is going to prepare the ESX server to, for the networking purpose. So the vShield manager is going to prepare the ESX servers for the networking purpose. So it should have a vDistributed switch and basically called it a DRS cluster to be part of it. So once you integrate the vShield manager with the vCenter server, it is going to prepare the vCenter and ESX for networking services and you have to attach it to the vShield server of it. Then once you integrate the vShield with the vCenter server, then we need to attach the vCenter to the vCloud director application. Now we are going to tell the vCloud director that this is the vCenter which is available Okay, which can be used for allocating the resources, which can be used for allocating the resources. Now, what we have to do here now, we have to go to the vCenter, right? So let's first understand setting up the vCenter platform and So I'm logging into the vCenter server called as a 2.1. So the administrative at the rate vSphere.local on the password. So I'm creating a cluster, first data center. So I'm giving HYD as my data center. So under the data center, I'm creating a DRS cluster. ALDRS. So now I'm adding the ESX servers into the DRS cluster.
So we can see we should monitorize the client. Just open the console. We need to assign the IP address. Sorry, sorry. No, no, this is a console, Linux machine. Was pre, pre, we should have pre installed virtual machine. It is on Linux. Nowadays, all the products from VMware are coming on Linux. Console. Just log into this machine, wait for 10 minutes of time so that it initializes the setup. So, until you log in first time, it does not go into setup. So, saying simply, but the system startup is not complete. Okay. So, please log out and log back and after a few minutes of time. Okay. So, now once you log into that, then it initializes the VShield application. Until then, it does not initialize the VShield application. So, don't be hurry there. Log in there. Just wait for 10 minutes, then log out again, re log in, then we'll be able to see the machine application. Yeah. Yeah. Reset, correct. This is a separate environment. One is the Yeah, for V cloud. No, it can be set. Could be set. So it is. It depends. So it is no need that you did. You should have two different networks. The objective. No. It is only for purpose. So log in with the admin user account. Just say type enable. You just put question mark, you get the sub command. Okay, just like a switch or a router which you manage, right? Just go to enable mode. Again, the same password which we gave during the installation of that. 
So again, you press question mark, you see the sub command. So we don't feel like a Linux, right? Yeah. We also like a router or else. Because the vShield manager provides networking services. Do a setup so that you can assign the IP address. So IP address, what IP address you want to set up? I'm just giving. Uh, no, during the deployment is going to ask you right password. Okay. Just save the configuration. So, yes. So once you assign all these things, just reboot it once. So we can see a reboot. Just use that. Nothing else we need to do here. Just assign the IP address, then we can access it through the browser. So, what step we did here now? We said called as a deploy and prepare the vShield manage. This is the step what we did. So, what is the next step which we need to do here now? Integrate vShield manager with vCenter and environment. Plug into vShield portal using browser, using a browser, then best record is specify the IP address or the name of the vCenter to integrate. I'm opening the browser. HTTPS colon slash slash That is the IP address which we gave it for VShield Manager appliance. It can be on a different network. The recommended is then put all the management components into one single network. That way you will not have any security boundary issues, communication issues. So we can see VMware vShield Manager, add the admin account and the password which we gave during the installation of it.
from the once you log into the vShield manager application so this is vcenter server just click on that so it's by the vcenter server vcenter server ip address dot root dot one the user account Now this is the V Center user account. Yes, administrator address V Center dot local. That is the V Center server administrator account. So you have Red Hat Linux. Then you have V Cloud application. Then you have V Center, then you have VS Access Server, then you have V Shield Manager. There are many things which are there. You have to remember the passwords for various things. Okay. So once you have this, you can see V Center Server 192.1.2. Then when we go to the data center, we will be able to see here. Once it's been integrated, we can see the VS Access Server. So endpoint. So that is what we did. Log into the VSuite portal using the browser. Then we specify the IP address and name the vCenter to integrate. The last step which we need to do is to attach vCenter server and vSuite manager to the vCloud environment. So we have did vSuite to the vCenter server. Now vCenter to the vCloud data and vCloud data to the vSuite. That is what we need to integrate now. So now, if you want to do that, to where I have to log in here now? V Cloud. So, So once you log into the VCloud directory, we see attach a vCenter. Just click on attach a vCenter. Name of the vCenter server. The user account of the vCenter server. Same will be. We are going to ask you the visual manager. That's how we can see code as a vCenter server, which will be attached. So here we can see the vCenter server successfully under the So here you will be able. So once you go to the manage and monitor, you will be able to see the vCenter and the runnet. So this is the basic platform which you need to set at least for to test or to understand the vCloud editor application. So these are the, the various steps which you need to perform and to come down. So what here I have to do here now in a 10 step. Login to the 
weekly order letter portal then select attach v center and provide v center server ip comma credentials then provide v shield ip address and credentials to integrate that now the platform is set okay So I have one ESXi server, which is my 1.168.1.8. So on this, how many virtual machines I created? One virtual machine for Linux, that is weak load data replication. One virtual machine for vCenter server. One virtual machine for vShield manager. So I'm not going to use this ESX server for providing the resources to the end users. This is only for running the cloud platform. Okay, this ESX server is running only the cloud applications, which can provide the cloud computing and the environment. So we have another two ESX servers. So I'll put in a vertical manner. So we have two ESX servers. Which is 19.168.1.10 and 19.168.1.11, which we call another ESX server. And these two are managed through the part of the DRS cluster. They are part of the DRS cluster and one is through the recent server, which is called as in 2.0. 12. So this IP address is 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, and so this is my 1.10, 1.11 years extra. So here we have a computing power, we have a storage, and we have network resources which are available here. So this is how the entire uh, environment is. This is what the base minimum required to test it okay in this case okay right so we'll take a break for 10 minutes then we'll try to understand the provider organization okay and production also we'll keep that vms on a separate esx server and a separate cluster actually so where Yes. So there are two ESX servers where we can part of an HA and DRS cluster and we can deploy the center server, the shield manager and the cloud data application. So we'll just take a break for 10 minutes then we'll continue.
before we go into the next step, we'll just take a simple generic example. This one. It can be quite a confusion on them. I'm just making it very clear. Until you focus on it, you cannot understand it. Okay. So you want to provide. So basically, what is it? Go down services to the public. So basically, nothing but a source. So your objective is one. People should come and able to store store the their goods. Okay. So people should feel that it is secured okay, and protected. and people will will expect it is safe okay that so this is what your business so you are thinking to set up your own go down for the public so a lot of people are there which they don't want to use their own house as a showroom so they want to use your go down for the public so right so now what is your first requirement here now So what you have to set up here now? Look at this general. Hmm? So you need uh, basically infrastructure, correct? So what does this infrastructure you require first? So you would see called as a building. Okay. So here in the Gordon services, people might say that I need to store in the cold, in I would say called as an 18 degrees temperature. another person says i need to store into the cold where 24 to 26 degrees temperature and there are other goods which does not require any cooling okay they could be stored requirement is and we basically called as a raised floor where So basically, this is what is requirement. One customer says that okay, I have a goods which I have to keep this goods in uh, under the less than 18 degrees temperature. Now another customer says that okay, I'm fine with the 24 to 26 degrees, so my goods should be stored in the 24 to 26 degrees. But I cannot do that. Another customer says that okay, my goods does not require any kind of a cooling. I can just switch it off. The other guy says that I need to put my goods into the raised floor where the rats or any kind of an basically insects or the disease will not enter into my goods supply now what does your infrastructure should support here now so all the things so if you don't support this customer so will he is going to come and use your services so if you going to if you are not going to provide this services what happens now so you are not that customer will not be able to get any come to that so you are we as part of the infrastructure you need to build so it require basically called as a go downs go downs the question is in what capacity correct a 100 square feet go down is a go down 1 acre go down is a go down 10000 acre go down is a go down correct now what capacity is A startup company, what he will try to do? He says that let me try. So I will say that okay, let me put up a 1,000 square feet or one acre, and that I put something around called as a two go downs, which are rough. Now I would say called as a 5,000 square feet, 5,000 square feet, correct? So he is building. Now he says that okay, small area, another two go downs. So which the cooling of 24 degrees or less than the 20 degrees temperature of or say 1,000 square feet and 1,000 square feet like this. So he has constructed four go downs. So he bought one acre of land and he constructed four four go downs. He said two go downs of 5,000 square feet, 5,000 square feet, another two go downs of 1,000. So he is a basically startup company. So he would don't want to invest much. He might be doing that. 
what is the risk and what is the advantage for this guy so let's say he started he set up the infrastructure he started marketing so once you start marketing what you can see now you can start seeing the customers coming into picture now these godans are very smaller capacity so what happens now you would see that okay so my out of two godans one godan is full so he is not able to accommodate anything in the one godan now he has another godan which is available there now that now if he fills that another godan can the existing customer expand it here So there is already one customer is using the godown services, and he is using somewhere around out of 5,000 square feet, he is using a 500 square feet. After one year, he comes back saying that I want to use another 500 square feet, and I want to store goods. Now your two godowns are full now. You don't have a capacity now. Now what does the customer say here now? I need another 500 square feet. Whether you provide it, if you don't provide, then I'll go to another customer. Okay. now your infrastructure should be able to scale up to the requirement of the customer as and when required so why is coming to you that you are setting up the infrastructure he he will pay you based on the usage correct so you will you will tell this guy says that okay you pay me on a monthly basis of sub x amount and how long you want to store you can store it so i'll store till 10 months 11th month i'll come i'll see there is a market then i'll sell it off Okay, it is. He doesn't know that tomorrow whether the customer will be available, not available. Tomorrow, what customer is also going to come? He doesn't know that. So now your capacity should be so that you should be able to expand your capacity. But how soon you can expand it? Now, if entire my capacity is full, and if I take another one year to expand, now what happens to all my customers who are going to come for the one year, and the existing customers who want to expand? Now we don't have resources. Okay. Now you see that another cold storage is there. Now, can you are you going to charge the same cost for these two godowns? Here the maintenance is less correct. Here maintenance is used because you need to maintain the temperature. There is a cooling requirement. There is additional power consumption. That happens here. You might see that you don't need any power consumption over here. The basic power consumption, but here lot of maintenance is here now. A one thousand square feet here and one thousand square feet here. Does it going to cost the same? We might see that too much of basically called as a cost over here, which will be involved also. Because otherwise my goods will not be available there. Then what is the other benefit? Now what is the other things here? So what does the customer expect over here now? You build five thousand square feet and you are telling that everybody come and put that. Tomorrow when a customer goes, he goes to another person area and he takes the bag and goes away. Uh, there is a security concern or not? Look at from a general. So you have built up a five thousand square feet, and you are asking everybody to come and store, okay? And if you are not enabling a proper security, so I am going to the Ramraju place, and I am taking his bag, and I am going away. Okay, I don't know what is there, but I have seen a bag and just carry it off. Or someone else can come into my place and can take that thing. So isolation of customers. How do you isolate them? How do you ensure that their equipment or their goods are being secured, and as long as no other person will not be? So I might have my goods which could be very confidential to me. You might have your goods which are very confidential to you. Sometimes I feel that nobody should know what I'm storing here also. Yes, it could be a bag, but what is there inside the bag? Now that is where we see quite a something called a security comes into picture. Isolation of the security in this case, which is quite a. So you need to ensure that there will be security, and you need to ensure that we have something called as an expansion with this bag. Okay. So this is what you see from the perspective of it. So you should have infrastructure which can meet a different customer, so that you can have a different customer. Now, what is your cloud here now? If your document is a godown, you simply see that cloud is something a godown actually. It is a store. It is a basically a warehouse. Okay, it is a warehouse. So, what does this warehouse will consist of? Servers, storage, network, and security devices. 
when you look at the cloud computing which is infrastructure as a service it is a just a warehouse which consists of the servers which consists of the storage which consists of the network which consists of that now what is this warehouse is providing it is delivering the it resources to the various customers so one customer say i need 10 gigahertz processing power another customer says i need 50 gigahertz processing power another customer says i need 500 gigahertz processing power another customer says i need 1 terabyte capacity of ram another customer says i need 200 gb storage space another customer says i need a firewall another customer says i need a load balancer with multiple facilities and just like a, a plan right so where you see quite a few choices our warehouse is providing the servers is providing the storage is providing the network it is providing security one customer comes and says that i need all this four one customer might see that i need only the servers with little bit of capacity of storage with a little bit of network but i don't need security of it another customer says that i need only the storage i don't need the servers so what is your google drive or a dropbox one box it is a storage right does it giving any servers there it is just a storage so you are taking the storage service and you are storing all the files into the dropbox somewhere else so do you, are you bothered about what is the backend infrastructure there no i don't know really what server is using what i'm using my file is sitting there i'm happy with that now here also so when you see code doesn't delivering the it resources to various customers so here we see the server storage and network security all these things now what kind of customer will come to you now one customer will come what is his challenge budget is a challenge but performance is not a bottleneck for him another customer will come little bit of performance is a consider little bit of scalability is a consider little bit of security is a constraint for him and third customer will come he needs performance he needs more resources he needs scalability he needs basically security he needs basically code as in the various applications of it now can you charge for all these customers the same cost no. no. now if you say that i am going to have a superior infrastructure which gives me superior performance but i am going to cost you per hour 10 dollars the customer who does not require a superior performance maybe he cannot afford that price they will say that sorry boss i cannot afford you so i cannot do that but if you put the infrastructure cost and if you provide services at a low price are you benefited here no. you are putting a 10 crore rupees into the infrastructure you are putting up a cold storage means you are putting up additional infrastructure to protect and to ensure the degrees is maintained monitored and that what is the challenge for this now if power goes for 10 hours what happens here now what are the millions of crores of rupees which we have put inside is gone that's it because all the drugs will be spoiled in less than if you maintain to load that now what do you need to maintain that what he has to do now he has to maintain a generator he has to maintain a backup generator now he sees that more security to the system because the customer will basically do a penalty on this guy because by trusting you that you will provide me 99.99 percent availability and uh, when change the temperature that is the reason why i put your goods into this system now if you are meant if you are not maintaining it my, i am going to do that so i'm going to put a penalty on this side now who is the risk here now why am i am a customer i am going and using your services and you are telling that you are providing me 99.99 percent by trusting that i am coming to you okay but if you are providing all the services i need to invest a lot of things once i invest a lot of things Maybe I cannot provide all these things at the same time. So I have a SAS hard disk, I have a SATA hard disk, I have a SSD hard disk. What makes the difference between these three? The first one performance makes a difference, like a second thing cost makes a difference, correct? 1 TB of SATA hard disk is costing you 3000 rupees. 1 TB of SAS hard disk is costing you 30,000 rupees. 1 TB of SSD is costing you 1 lakh rupees. We are saying capacity is the same. 
but when it comes to the cost and performance they are very different so my sata if i'm going to get at the 3 lakh 3000 rupees i'm fine as long as i don't need performance but if millions of users are going to access the data does the sata give the performance which is required here no so i have to go for ssd where it can be done so my investment is what there now similarly performance i have an a dual core processor i have an i3 processor i have an i7 processor i have a geon processor i have a geon e7 processor they are all processors only but can this processor will give the performance of the i7 no can this processor will give the performance of the geon e7 no this processor will get at a 5000 rupees this processor will come at 150000 rupees still it is a processor but what makes the difference here no performance makes a difference i can tell this guy i can give you this server on a rent basis for 1000 rupees per month but if you ask me the a server with a geo or can i give it for 1000 rupees i'll tell him that but if performance is more and investment on this server is more then i have to charge you more for it i'll tell him that i can best give you for 15000 rupees per month that is what the best i can afford it. correct look at from a different perspective of it now what does your infrastructure could consist of you are putting up a cloud computing environment which you want to deliver infrastructure as a service model where you want to del- deliver the servers storage network and security to the public or to the internal users users first thing is that you need to set up the platform you need to allocate the resources now you have a weak cloud director application so what does the first weak cloud should understand what resources are existing at the physical level and you need to classify them if you don't classify them then when you are allocating can you do that here now let's say you are putting up 10 go down and you are not classifying them okay now when you are allocating it do you see confusion or you don't see a confusion confusion now you have to classify them that okay this is my class 1 this is my class 2 this is my class 3 but the cost on this is less cost on this is higher the cost is less the higher the cost now the weak cloud director you have the cloud application this is my cloud computing platform which is my weak cloud now weak cloud where it can get resources v center it has to get the resources from the v center now this is my v center in the v center i can have multiple clusters in the v center i can have multiple clusters one cluster which could be my high performance cluster another cluster could be low performance cluster another cluster could be low performance cluster now here i am going to have e7 processor servers with 1 db capacity of ram with 40 terabit capacity of storage with ssd hard disk so with a servers which is having a e7 processor with 1 db capacity of ram and 40 db capacity of storage which is the ssd hard disk here i have a servers which are having e5 processor which is having a capacity of 2 terabit capacity which is having a 80 terabit capacity which is having quite a fast hard disk the underlying storage is a fast now here i'm having an e2 processor which is geon processor which is having quite a 8 terabit capacity which is having quite a 150 terabit capacity of this which is my sata hard disk storage cost per server which one could be higher here now 
the first one could be the cost per server could be very very high yes the capacity is less here but the cost per unit is very high here the capacity is more but the cost per server is less here i might have a 50 servers or a 30 server 20 servers 20 servers like this let me go to that now this is my v center server i can have one more v center i can have another v center i can have another v center under this v center i can have cluster 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 now as in you you need more infrastructure what you are going to do here now so here today you have four v center servers running 4000 vsx servers now you are saying that your capacity is 80% is been utilized now you have to scale up right so that your existing customers can scale and your new customers can be onboarded again what you have to do here now again you have to buy the one few more servers again you have to build a v center again you had that capacity to be v cloud right now how does v cloud understand what capacity is available here now okay so we use a terminology called as an provider organization yes we use the terminology called as a provider organization technical terminology given by the vmware is called as a provider organization provider organization is a group of resources v center resources which can be used to allocate to the end users so group of v center resources which can be used to allocate to the end users so it can be the esx servers which is called as a drs cluster so under the drs cluster we see the esx servers and storage which we would see that as part of that and as part of that we see called as a network resource So as part of the network resources, what we would see, we would see called as an IP address. So we would see called as a public IP address, private IP address. Then we would see called as a router. Then we would see called as a firewall. Then we see called as VPN device. All these things we see called as a network resource. so provider organization can identify the type of resources and classification of it of resources based on the cost and performance based on the cost and performance the v cloud director application can interact with multiple v centers one provider organization okay we also called as an provider virtual data centers it's called as an virtual data centers the other numbers we call as provider organizations or provider virtual data centers so some people will call provider organization some people will call as a provider virtual data centers okay so one provider organization or a vdc or so one provider virtual data center can get resources from one drs cluster it is must it is a must without that we can the weak load can understand the resources hmm. not well not yet
ensure that the DRS cluster can scale up, scale out as and when required. Ensure the DRS cluster can scale out as and when required. So normally in ESX server, so in a vCenter, so 32 ESX servers can be part of the DRS cluster. So initial stage itself, if you put 32 ESX servers, tomorrow if you require more capacity, can you scale up, scale out? You cannot scale out. First start with four or five ESX servers. Then as the users start expanding, you can keep expanding it. But make sure that the existing customers who are sitting on that cluster can scale out or scale up. So today I'm coming here, I'm using the 10 gigabits processing power with 250 GB of RAM. After six months, I'm coming and saying that I want to increase from 10 gigabits to 50 gigabits from 250 RAM to the 2 terabyte capacity of RAM. Now if I tell him that I'm going to provide a different environment and all these things, he might see that, okay, I may not be quite it. So you should be able to provide him a feature where he can expand the resources on its own current environment. Now, we can classify, we call them as an, when we classify, we classify them something called as a gold, we see called something called as a platinum, called as a gold or a silver in perfect. So we classify them something called the platinum, gold, silver. It is not necessary that we have to specify the same way. It is only for classification purpose, identification purpose. So when you are allocating the resources to the user, now based on the feasibility of the user, you can allocate the resources. So I would say gold services or a silver services or a platinum services like this. So I'm just going to the Amazon. So Amazon EC2 pricing, you see that Fire, on-demand instances, Linux, reserved instances. So you see Q2 micro, C2 small, C2 medium, you see again M3, medium, M3 large, you see M3 extra large, You see C4. What is this classification here now? What makes the difference here? You see that. Why is classifying so much? You just see here what is the difference between this. Here we are seeing M3, T2, micro, T2, small, T2, medium. We are seeing processor, RAM variable, number of process items. You see that, what is the cost for it? Current generation, we can see there 2, 6.5, whatever that RAM. So just come, let's come there. What is the cost we are saying here? 0 0.013 per hour dollar. What is the M3, too large as a cost here? 0 0.566. The performance, the capacity. Here, what is giving here? SSD hard disk. Okay. You see EBS, SSD hard disk. You see called as a this thing. Now the cost of this, here you're seeing that what is that? D2 into 8 extra large, 36 cores it can have. It can get up to 116 GB RAM. The double the capacity of that, you can scale up to 244 GB RAM. And 24 into 2000 HDDs, you can correct. A 2 terabyte capacity of hard disk of 24 number. And which is costing how much here now? 5.520 per hour is the cost. That means per hour is charging you five dollars for it. So roughly around five hundred thirty, four hundred rupees to five hundred rupees. We are talking about per hour. So eight five to forty, roughly around we are talking about four thousand rupees per day for eight hours of time. 
Now, if you are calculating on a 24 hours of time, we are talking about 20,000 or somewhere around 4, 4, 4 16, somewhere around 15,000 rupees per day. Now, what is going to be the cost of this hour on a monthly basis? Rent. So, which we might see that somewhere around 3 to 4 lakh rupees of cost, which is the incur per month on it. But if you really want to set up this kind of infrastructure server, it might be costing you roughly around 15 lakh rupees. We are talking about 24 into 2 terabyte hard disk of this one, which is SSD hard disk. That itself might be coming up to the 8 to 9 lakh rupees or 10 lakh rupees. Okay. And the memory and the process which you are talking about this case. So you are paying it on a monthly basis. Instead of investing at 20 lakh rupees of rent, you are paying and maybe at 2 lakh rupees on a monthly basis. Okay. That is how these are your classifications based on the price, based on the capacity, based on the performance of it. Similarly, I go to the Windows Azure. I'm seeing here bandwidth support calculation, shared basic standard premium. You can see application, virtual machine. You see basic standard A series A0, A1, A2, A3, A4. A0 means what is the processor you get? One core with 768 MB of RAM. I go with A4. What is coming here now? Eight cores with 14 GB RAM, which is my standard. When I go to the standard, what happens here now? The standard tier of compute instances provides an optimal set of compute memory and IO resources for running of a wide array of applications. This gives better performance. Now you think one core, 3.5 GB RAM. What is the hard disk type here? SSD. Here you might, you see that here it could be a normal hard disk, SATA hard disk. Here it's providing you called as an SSD hard disk. Go for a D14, 16 cores, 112 GB of RAM with 800 GB of SSD hard disk. Now if you select that, you might see that the pricing could be something different based on that. So that is how it goes into the now, just a purchase. So, for each and everything, the price will get very effort. So, you just don't log in. That. Yes, that is what. So, here also, when you are looking at a cloud computing environment in a weak cloud director, first thing is then you need to set up the resources and you have to classify the resources. I have a group of ESX servers which are having I N processor and the better high-end memory, better performance memory, and better performance storage and network resources. I have another server like this. Now, in a weak cloud data, we need to tell that which is the provider virtual data center and what is the capacity which is available here. Now, when I add this ESX servers into the weak cloud application for the provider VDC, then weak cloud will understand what is the capacity available at a ground level which can be allocated to the users. So without knowing the capacity, can the weak load allocate to the user here? No. One user comes and says that I want 1000 terabyte capacity of RAM. Now does the weak load should know that that capacity is available at a physical level? If it does not know that, it cannot do that. Now provider VDC will give, allows the, basically the weak load application to understand. The weak load application understands the the capacity of the resources available. Capacity of the resources available here. So how much capacity of RAM available? How much capacity of processing power available? How much capacity of storage available? How much capacity of what network resources are available here? So the provider organization will tell the weak load application that how much capacity of processing power available how much capacity of RAM available, how much capacity of storage available, and what network resources are available, what public IP addresses are available, and how they are going to be accessible, what private networks are available, and how they can be accessible to that. Now you have to provide all this information to the weak load application. Then the weak load application can sub-allocate to the users based on the requirement of it. Now I have this kind of environment here now. This is a different set of servers. 
in cluster different different cluster 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 in this case how many provider virtual data centers i need to create in a week log per cluster 1 this is my one provider vdc 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 this is my one provider now 5 6 7 8 9 provider vdc which can be allocated to the week log data application Now each one will act as a one virtual data center. Each one will act like one virtual data center. Each one will act like one virtual data center. Now you are classifying it. One one provider VDC. Yes. Now that will take from me the number of ESX servers which have been having that. Okay, so let's say you have so let's say I have one single V center. I have three DRS clusters. Under this DRS cluster, I have three ESX servers. 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 The capacity of this ESX servers, each ESX server is an 100 gigahertz processing power, two terabyte capacity of, I would say, one TB capacity of RAM, and 10 terabyte capacity of SSD shared storage. So this is what is my capacity here now? 100 gigahertz processing power and 1 TB. What is my 110 TB shared across these two ESX servers? Now, what is the capacity of this cluster? The capacity of this cluster is an 300 gigahertz processing power. So, what is the capacity of the RAM here now? We double RAM. What is the capacity of the storage here? So, what we call the 10 TB capacity. The 10 TB is shared across these three ESX servers. So my capacity is a 300 gigahertz processing power, 3 terabytes of RAM, and 10 terabyte capacity of storage. Now when I add this cluster, sorry, tomorrow if I add one more ESX server into the cluster and add to the week log, what happens to my capacity here now? That capacity will get increased. So automatically the capacity will become 500 gigahertz processing power, and will happen quite as a 5 TB capacity of RAM. And will become so something 50 terabyte capacity of storage. Clear? Okay. So we are going to the weak load application. In the weak load application, the first thing we see called a provider VDC. So provider VDC is create a provider VDC. Name of the provider VDC. So you can classify it based on a silver, whatever that. I'm just giving AL. Iphone Platinum. I am saying AL Iphone Platinum. I am telling that this is a Platinum one. What hardware version it is going to support? The virtual machine version. So if you have an ESX server 5.0, it supports version 7.0. Okay. If you have a ESX server 5.5, they support a version of 10. Okay. If you want to create a lower version of it, then you can still have that. When a group of ESX servers which are mixed of that, you can do that. So I'm just selecting a hardware version 7. I'm just giving a 9, which is my ESX server 5.1 and above. We go next. Select the resources. From which V center you want to select the resources? Here, what is displaying here now? V center. If you have five vCenter servers, it displays all the five vCenters. It displays all the five vCenters. Now we are seeing one vCenter here as because we attached only one vCenter. So I'm just selecting the one vCenter. So under that vCenter, how many clusters are available? In our environment, how many clusters are available? Only one cluster available. That is the reason why it is displaying only one single cluster. If there are three clusters, how many things will display here? Three clusters. Now, what is your choice now? You have to choose here from which cluster you want to allocate the resources into this provider organization. Got my point? 
सब यू हैव टू गो स्टेप वन स्टेप टू स्टेप थ्री दैट केस फ्रॉम जस्ट कलेक्टिंग दिस रिसोर्स फोन हियर एज ऑफ नाउ वी आर नॉट प्रोवाइडिंग एनी नेटवर्क रिसोर्सेस सो एज ऑफ नाउ वी डिड एलोकेट द नेटवर्क रिसोर्सेस फ्रॉम जस्ट कलेक्टिंग ओनली दिस वन क्लस्टर क्लिक ऑन नेक्स्ट स्टोरेज ऑन दिस एसएक्स सर्वर वी हैव दिस स्टोरेज सो यू सी डेटा स्टोर वन ऑफ फाइव डेटा स्टोर वन ऑफ सिक्स एंड एच के सी डिस्क वन सो डू वॉन्ट टू अलोकेट ऑल दी हार्ड डिस्क जस्ट जस्ट क्लिक ऑन हार्ड डिस्क ओके नाउ वट एम टेलिंग यूर नाउ एसलेटेड द रिसोर्स पुल अंडर द रिसोर्स पुल वॉट डेटा स्पॉट यू वॉन्ट टू इंक्लूड इन टू दिस नाउ दिस डेटा स्पॉट इफ आई एक्सक्लूडिंग डेटा स्टोर वन ऑफ फाइव डेटा स्टोर वन ऑफ सिक्स आई एम इंक्लूडिंग ओनली आई एस के सी डिस्क वन now what are the capacity of the is kc disk one that is available for the capacity to the users right if the data store is not available for the cloud can the vcloud application use that data store for allocating the resources no so you have to select that now i am selecting all the data store click on next now with esx servers in the cluster you want to be provided to the vcloud so i have 10 esx servers but i'm only providing three esx servers as of now to the cluster to the provider organization now it takes only the capacity of three servers so more if you want and again you can add up the other seven servers okay now you can specify the credentials for the this thing now what we cloud directed does this one it is going to deploy an agent called as a we cloud agent on the esx server and going to prepare the esx server for we cloud purpose This is the password of ESXA server. But we have yeah, that's what one credential for all the hosts. The same username and password for all the ESXA server. If the same username and password is same for all the ESXA, you can select that. Or a different username and password you can select here. So I'm just selecting the same username and password is my two ESXA server. Now, the V Cloud application will go to the ESXA server. And will deploy the agent called as a VCloud data agent and prepare the ESX server for cloud purpose. Now, so that the VCloud application can understand all this. Now, just say next, ready to complete. Just say finish. So now we have provided the processing power, we provided the memory, we provided the storage. Did we provide the network resources here? No. No. So by selecting the DRS cluster, you are choosing what ESX servers and what data stores available, and you are providing the data stores and ESX servers to that. Now, what are the capacity available on the ESX server? The processing power, memory, that is available for the cloud part. whatever the memory which is available that is available for that what are the storage which is available that capacity is available for this thing no it will not it will show you sir sir so you should not that's what i'm saying you should not put a different capacity of the six storage into single cluster you have to isolate them okay so if you are having a one single cluster put up the same capacity put up the same performance and ensure that they give you that it can be different capacity but performance wise they should be yes processor size same hard disk performance performance should be the same capacities can be yes now we can see that al i sun platinum status enabled so we can see enabled and we can see what the resource pool how many data stores we have here three data stores just go to the host so we can see that 1.10 1.11 are saying 1.11 yes it's not cannot be prepared so why we will see this So it is already added to the one of the 
weak load application that is the reason why it is not allowed you to that so i'll do it later i'll uninstall the weak load agent from here and reprepare it now we will be able to see here the all the es6 servers which are being added to the weak load application what are the requirements for the agent from here so one esx server can be managed from only one weak load application so that esx server should not be part of the any other weak load so and as far as the esx server uh, so the weak load 5.5 is considered your esx server can be 5.5 or can be below version of till 4.1 if the esx server is 4.0 below then it cannot be added into the reset directory so we can see the resources the drs cluster and we can see the vcenter which are available here and the data store which are being provided to this server but so here we can see that this as it is not being added that even 1.11 there is a reason why it is giving us the message like that yeah so you that might be yeah first just simple go here and you just click on that i did that but not taking a lot time but then that's making everything okay remember that thing that cannot be picked up you have to see this one that's what i'm saying you just look at the error message over here so just click on this one here you get the sub information so you go to the detail section the detail section will clearly give you message for what reason it is not going to prepare it the host 19161.11 is managed by another v cloud directory system val v cloud okay so unprepare the host from the other system and uninstall the agent software on the host office. so once you uninstall this agent then it can be part of this that you just try to see this error message it becomes easy that there could be n number of reasons i cannot say one reason for it but you have to should know that too okay. if it is not going into the maintenance mode also it cannot prepare the host okay just simple that if the esx the vcenter is not putting that esx server into maintenance mode okay then it will not be able to deploy that if it takes more time to deploy, uh, basically put into the maintenance mode then it cannot prepare the okay? host okay. Can be yes. Or you can manually put the SXS server into maintenance mode, and you can prepare the host if you feel that it is taking longer time to do that. So let me install the uninstall the weak load director agent on the. Yeah, please. Okay. See that I cannot say a simple straight answer to you. So simple. So you want to buy a house, okay? Yes, there are mechanisms available. So it depends on the application to the application. It depends on. So as part of the Microsoft, what you have given, if you talk about, let's say for uh, a Windows Seven operating system, he says that one gigabyte is passing power. the 2 gb ram okay so yeah, where you can minimum requirements okay that you can take into consideration is there anything that uh, online online capacity planner there is a tool yeah. from a vm vm where it is ESXS CLI software VIB remove iPhone F iPhone iPhone maintenance mode iPhone N the name of the we cloud so here I'm saying we cloud agent
So first I went SXSCL like software VIB list to get the list of all the components installed in the SXSR. Right? Then I'm just using this one. Yeah, it assumes that the SX server is in a maintenance mode if I use this option. Yes, I were actually not going to be. Existing VMs will not have any impact. Okay. But the virtual machines which are managing through the vCloud, so that, that users will not be able to access that VMs. But VMs will be running guest OS, all these things, you don't see any problem. So. Yes. Yes, it's a CL line. That virtual interfaces, something is called it. It's rebooted. I rebooted it. Let it come back. So you can send email like to me, I'll just assist. But you have a step by step log document is there. So you can just follow that document. You can just... Yeah. Let them send the details today. I think they are going to send you. Once they send, I'll take the remote and send you guys.
Correct. You have to check maintenance or uh, check with any network communication error. Okay. Then that, that could be the only issue which you see. Maintenance. That could be maintenance. You just manually put ESX into maintenance. Will not be affected. So I'm going to the vCenter again, uh, to the vCloud application. So I'm just going to the ESX server. Again, see, prepare for. Uh, default it does that. Some cases what happens the vCenter might take longer time to put the ESX into maintenance mode. That time this will get timeout and you will get error message. You see that it is putting maintenance mode. Yeah, right, we can see here now the agent got installed and is being prepared. So we should ensure that also. for some reason the ESX server gets rebooted and then we will be able to see a status here. Right. So we'll stop here. Next week we'll understand providing the networking resources. But I would just recommend that you people just prepare, just go through with switching functionality, routing, natting, okay, some kind of all the basic networking. Okay. The networking is the most confusion part of that, but uh, please go through that all the terminology, VLAN, routing, okay, switching, mapping, then we see for the public IP, private IP, IP subnets, all these things. Right, so I'll stop it here for today. So tomorrow, next class, we'll see that.